Oh, hi there. My name's Hillary. I'm here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. This is going to be the third video of cold water curiosities. And while I'm sitting here playing with a moon jellyfish, moon jellies are not in fact the topic of today's video. Now in the first video about acorn barnacles, I actually saw a limpet in the tank and I thought it was fascinating and I've been wanting to talk about limpets ever since. But part of the thing with this video series is that I have to find it while I'm out here in order for it to be a video. So I've already done some scoping around and I have found a limpet, actually multiple limpets for us to talk about and learn about in this video. So go ahead, grab your favorite snack, and I'll be right back so that we can get started. Let's get started talking a little bit about the different number of limpets that exist. On average, there are between 14 and 22 species of limpet that are found in the Pacific Northwest. There's what you would call the true limpets. There's another group of limpets that are considered false limpets, but there's even more categories still. Limpets like the keyhole limpet and the slipper limpet aren't technically a part of either group, but a lot of times they're commonly referred to as limpets. Now limpets are gastropods, which is a class of mollusks. Now they're aquatic marine snails and there's gonna be two specific characteristics about these guys. One, they're gonna have a very strong muscular foot and they're going to have a disc shaped shell. Now, just like some of the other species that I've talked about, the limpets have a villager life stage when they're small and the juveniles have a coiled shell. As they grow, that shell is going to evolve into a broad dome or disc shaped uncoiled shell that we are seeing here. They also have another body feature that stands out and that's their tentacles. There's something pretty cool about their tentacles, actually two really cool things. So one is that while the tentacles don't technically have eyes, they do have light sensors. They can tell the difference between light and dark. Now this is gonna be really beneficial when it comes to protecting themselves against predation. Say there's a bird flying overhead and that bird creates a shadow. Well, when it does, those light receptors are gonna pick that up and the limpet knows to hunker itself and seal itself down so that it can escape predation. Now something else that these tentacles are able to do is that they have receptors on them that are able to sense chemicals in the water. This is another way that they're able to evade predators like some of the sea stars. I think it's pretty cool. I mentioned a second ago that they have a very strong muscular foot. Now by contracting this muscle, they're able to propel themselves and move around. Now what's really impressive is that if you combined that foot with the strength of their shell, you can actually see them move objects like rocks that are much larger than them out of their way when they're trying to get through a certain area or even protect their habitats. Limpets have a mouth that has a radula. It allows them to scrape algae off of the rocks and the different surfaces they're on. Now, if you've ever paid attention or watched any of the snails in your home aquarium, you're probably already familiar with this and have seen this scraping movement in action. I mentioned at the beginning that there are different kinds of limpets. There's true limpets and false limpets. And what differentiates these limpets can be seen in their anatomy. True limpets have gills that are located towards the front of their bodies, whereas false limpets are air breathers. Looking at the size and the lifespan of limpets, they can range from just over four inches in shell size to just under a half an inch for the Pacific Northwest species, but most of them are between one inch and less than a half an inch. Interestingly enough, their lifespan is pretty long, I was surprised to learn that the average limpet lives anywhere between 5 and 16 years. I've gotta say, that's longer than most of my cleanup crew lives. Let's talk a little bit about the range that you can find them. Obviously, I'm talking about ones that are specifically located in the Pacific Northwest, but most of these species in my area have a range from Alaska all the way down to Southern California. But as I mentioned in the beginning, limpets can be found in waters worldwide. 
let's talk a little bit about their habitats and where you can find them. These limpets have a pretty broad range. You can find them all the way from the high intertidal zone down to depths of 660 feet. And that's just the ones that are in the Pacific Northwest. Now there are two great ways to find limpets. One is to look for their food source, which is typically found on rocks and the different macro and microalgaes of the intertidal zone. Some limpets have specific forms, and those forms are going to tell you where you can find those specific limpets. For example, the shield limpet has a rock form, a mussel form, a turban snail form, an eelgrass form, and a feather boa kelp form. Now, another interesting type of limpet is the surf grass limpet. They do something really cool. They're found on these grasses and they consume the grasses. They're able to synthesize the flavonoids in the surf grass and they're actually able to incorporate those chemicals into their shell. Now, this is another really interesting way that they are able to evade predation because say a predator comes by, it mistakes it for that surf grass that it is spending time on. So I think that's pretty cool. There's more to consider with respect to diet than just what the surf grass limpet eats. Now, I already mentioned that they use their radula to scrape algae off the rocks, but did you know that a one square inch sized limpet is able to survive each year with a 75 square inch area of encrusting seaweed? In addition to eating those seaweeds, they also are going to consume things like cyanobacteria, diatoms, film algae, and even microalgae that's on the surfaces of the rocks and the vegetation in their habitat. Now, as you're listening to this, you might be thinking, oh, it would be nice to have a limpet in my tank to help take care of cyano or diatom blooms or even the film algae on my glass. I would challenge you that when you're done watching this video to take a look in your aquarium, because in fact, there are species of limpets that are residing in our home aquariums. So let's talk a little bit about the predators. Believe it or not, even though most of these are small, there's a fairly large type of limpet called the giant owl limpet. It can reach four and a quarter inches in size. And a lot of times humans will consume those. Other than humans, the predators for the limpets include things like sea stars, which I've already mentioned, crabs, predatory marine snails, fish, and of course, birds. Oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot tell you how much fun I have had with this video. Just looking to find stuff to film for the limpets. I've seen so many other fascinating creatures and I really cannot wait to the next episode. Honestly, I don't think the 12 episodes are going to be enough for this series. So if you're enjoying them as much as I am, maybe we'll have to make more. All right, I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about limpets for this video. Stay tuned for the next video where we will definitely find some more fascinating creatures that are living here in the Pacific Northwest. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.